Hello everyone and welcome to this Three Colours Up. This one is our second Three Colours Up that's in support of our City States uh, vlog for Conquest. So in this one we're going to be tackling one of the Minotaurs. We have six of them in the army. I have taken on three of them. Jerry's took on the other three. So our, our colour schemes vary a little bit but you'll hopefully see that in the vlogs. So we're going to take one of the, the ones that I've painted, show you how it's done. Uh, keeping it nice and simple as always, a good use of contrast paints, washes and metallics. Nothing too, um, nothing too challenging here. A couple of hours should knock out your whole unit if you're painting along with us. So in the meantime, let's get down to the table and show you how it's done. So our first step with our Minotaur was our priming. And <clears throat> he's been primed first in Chaos Black, just to get the, the shadows and stuff into the miniature. Then after that, we've sprayed over the top with Mechanica Standard Grey. So that's our two-step priming for this miniature. Now, our first actual painting step is going to be a dry brush. And we're going to use Rack White for that. Because it's a nice, good colour uh, that's a slight off-white. So it should work quite well. It's meant to almost be a bit of a slap chop uh, application. Because we want to use it to bring up... All the details uh, on the miniature before we start anything else. Now some of this doesn't matter so much but in particular we want to make sure that the um, the body of the Minotaur and certain other details are all sort of pre-highlighted basically because we want to have the confidence and have the step in place so that when we come to um, apply other colors particularly contrast, because again, we're using a lot of contrast in this, like we did with the pole mark. We want to make sure that we have plenty of uh, highlight for the contrast paint to work. So just a case of dry brushing and highlighting the whole miniature. And when that's done, we can start work on the body of the Minotaur. So with our dry brushing now down, you can see what I'm trying to aim for here. It's sort of just adds a bit of texture and is going to aid with uh, our subsequent steps. So the first of our subsequent steps is we're going to be focusing on his skin. And for that, we're going to be using Black Templar. Now we're going to use Black Templar on the flatter part of the skins. Um, anywhere where there's a sort of a hair buildup, we're going to do that in a different color. We'll do that after uh, a couple other steps, but we want to make them a little different because that'll just make him stand out a little bit more. So the Black Templar is going to go down nice and heavy over our primed and dry brushed surface. I will just try and keep it away from any details that we don't want to be touched by it. At this point our Black Templar is now dry and we're going to move on to our browns. So for our browns we're going to be using Gore Granta Fur and this is going to encompass the fur that uh, our Minotaur has, plus leather details. So there's going to be some bits and pieces here that are going to be done in a brown. Uh, Gore Grant of Fur is just a nice colour for that. So we're just going to go ahead and like every other contrast paint, we're just going to apply it fairly heavily and just let it colour everything in. With the Gore Grunt of Fur dry, we're going to move on to our next colour, and that is going to be Wildwood. Now, this is a very heavy contrast paint. If you've not used it before, uh, you have to take your time with it and um, thin it as much as you feel. So, for example, here, you can see just how heavy a contrast paint this is. We don't need it to be as heavy as straight as it is straight out of the pot. So, thinning it a little bit with a touch of water will give us the consistency that we need and it's really just a case of picking out the areas that we want so for example we're going to be doing the shaft of the axe maybe get a little bit heavier than that but not much so let's see if that's a little better I would say so so we'll do the rest of that down to the hand Make sure we get the far side of it covered as well. And then further down on that side. So the only other place I really want this color is on the wrap for the sword.
just like that. Make sure we haven't missed anything too glaring there. And I think that's all that's required for that. So a pretty straightforward quick step. The next thing I want to do is move on to some metallics. And the first one is going to be our lead belcher. Again, always using the air color because I just prefer the consistency of it. Make sure my brush is clean. Then we're going to take some of this out, put it on our palette. And we're going to be doing a fair amount of metal work here. So we're going to be doing the whole face of the shield, the axe head, um, probably, yeah, probably just including the big central part as well. And a lot of this overlapping uh, armor will go metal. The stuff that looks a bit more scale meal, we're going to be doing in a different color. So we're going to be doing all our metallic, all our metal, uh, our regular metal, I guess, with our lead belcher. And then after that, we will look at the other color. With the lead belcher now down, we can move on to our next metallic, and that's going to be canoptic alloy. That's going to be for our scale mail and a few little bits of trim here and there. So if the pot would like to stay open, that would be nice too. Don't always get what we want though. So that should be enough. And on the scale, it really is just another base coating step, just being neat as possible with it. So we're going to do all of this part of the shoulder pad. Then the upper half of this one, we need to be a bit neater towards the edge there so we don't go into our lead belcher like that. We also have a ring on his horn, or there's a couple of rings. Looks like there's a couple here and a couple here we'll do. He's also got a nose ring that goes through one nostril, which is up here. We have bits on the sword. We have a belt buckle and we have some other trim here and there. And we're going to also do the edge of the shield and these big rivets as well. So just going to be a case of getting down to it and taking our time. And when we come back, we will start to do some shading. With the canoptic alloy now down, we're going to move on uh, very quickly to do a couple of steps. So first we're going to be using skeleton horde and this is just for the horns, so we'll just get that cracked open, make it a good little blob of it there. And it's just a case of letting the, the uh, dry brushing do its work. It's probably not the nicest of horn work, but uh, you know, it still does the job. So we'll just very quickly get this in. We can avoid those little goldish details there. Like so. So that's all that will be for that. The next thing I want to do is to move on to Flesh Terror's Red. And that is going to be our accent colour for the cloth. Now there's a little bit of cloth, but not a lot of it. Uh, like some of the other Minotaurs in the box that have more. Um, this guy doesn't have that much to show, so let's make sure. I hate these lids so much. <laughs> I hate the way they just snap shut on you again. So we'll move that to the side. And our cloth, we just want to get in there with our flesh terrors. And just go around all of it. Like I said, there's not too much of it, so it won't take that long. That should be all that's needed for that. So with the flesh tears down, these are all little steps that are going to be able to dry quite easily on their own. We can now move on to some null oil and we're going to shade all our lead belcher with that. So let's crack this open now as well. Should we get a good bit of it down on our palette here? I call it a palette, but you know, it's not really. <laughs> And we just want to get it into all the lead belcher details. And you can see I've gone a little too heavy there on this shoulder. So what we'll do is remove some from the brush and then let the brush soak up some of that excess there as well. 
So that makes it look a little bit neater. And it's just going to be a case now of going around all our lead belcher details with our null oil. And this is the point where we can stop and let things dry. With the null oil down and dry, you can see the sort of shading that we're getting. Everything's just looking a little heavier, a little more shaded and interesting looking. So our last step is going to be shading the um, Canoptic alloy. And for that, we're going to be using Cryptek Armor Shade Gloss. So pretty straightforward, same as the null oil, only this is not um, put down as heavily as the null oil because this wash, a bit like the Wildwood contrast paint, is very heavy. So you can see just how ridiculously heavy this wash actually is, which is great because you get to control the amount of flow that you have. So it's going to be a matter of going over all the areas that we've done with the canoptic alloy and just applying a bit of a shade to that. You can see again, it wants to pull in certain areas and we have to make sure we're controlling that uh, as we work along. But in general, it's pretty straightforward, much like the non oil was. We just want to prevent too much pooling happening. Some of the details are just a little too shallow to allow that to happen as easily. So we have to just take our time and just let it work into the details that are a little bit deeper. Like so. Pretty straightforward, so we're going to get on with this. And then after that, that is our miniature complete. With our last wash down and dry, our miniature is now complete. And as always, remember we're trying to aim for something that gets onto the tabletop quick without too much effort. And obviously there's going to be areas for improvement that you can always revisit at a later time. Particularly in this case, if I was to revisit this miniature, I would work more on the horns. I would make them look a little more interesting. We'd probably highlight up the fur, or the skin a little bit more. Uh, other things, possibly just dry brush the lead belcher back up a little bit, make it look a bit more scratched. But the miniature is painted. The miniature just needs basing and then it's ready to take its place with the rest of our city states army. So in general, I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's pretty straightforward. I like keeping these straightforward, of course. Uh, you can let me know in the comments what you think. Um, is this something you'd be happy to play with? Is this something you'd be happy to have on your shelf as part of a, a larger army? Let me know in the comments. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and see you again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.